What's up guys, I'm Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is a series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Black Ops 4 multiplayer. In today's episode, we're going to be moving on to the final tactical rifle that came with the launch build of the game, and this is the Swordfish. First up, as always, let's have a look at the damage profile. With the Swordfish, we get a damage profile of 3427, which means it's always going to be a 5-6 to six shot kill in core game modes, or a 1-2 to two shot kill in hardcore. As for rate of fire, keep in mind this is hand tested and it is very difficult to test super accurately for a burst gun with a really high rate of fire like this, but the closest I can tell is the Swordfish has a rate of fire of 1000 rounds per minute with an approximate burst delay of 160 milliseconds. Of course, I should also mention just in case you weren't aware, this is a 4 round burst. This means that our statistical minimum time to kill, assuming we don't have any attachments on it or operator mod or anything, is going to be 400 milliseconds in the 5 shot kill range and 460 milliseconds in the 6 shot kill range. This time to kill is very slow for this game. Most of the guns in the game, especially in closer ranges, will have a time to kill somewhere between 300 and 400 milliseconds. So the Swordfish, without any attachments and without the Operator mod, doesn't have a very good time to kill. Keep in mind though, our time to kill potential can be as fast as 180 milliseconds with the Swordfish, which is very, very fast, when you start implementing things like High Caliber or the Operator mod, which we will get into both of those in just a little bit. As for armor, just like with pretty much all of the guns in this game, in core game modes, it will always take you exactly one extra shot against an armor user. This brings us to our ranges, and as you can see here, our 5 shot kill range is very good. It extends all the way out to 50 meters, which is going to be the vast majority of your gunfights. With suppressor, we reduce that range by 20%, and with long barrel, we literally double that range, which means every one of our gunfights will definitely fall within that 5 shot kill range, at least with the maps that we currently have access to. As for hardcore, our one-shot kill potential extends out to 50 meters. Once again, suppressor will reduce that by 20%, and long barrel will double that. This brings us to headshots, and we get a standard headshot multiplier of 1.1 without high caliber, and this means we get a headshot damage profile of 3729, which just essentially means headshots are completely useless with the Swordfish if you're not running high caliber. With high caliber though, we get a high caliber multiplier of 1.44, or approximately 1.44, which takes our headshot damage profile to a 4838, and what this means is from 0 to 50 meters, just mixing one headshot in mixed with your body shots, will now allow you to get a one burst kill, which is where that really fast 180 millisecond time to kill comes in, and therefore high caliber is an extremely important attachment with the swordfish. As for hipfire, as you can see here, the Swordfish has pretty standard hipfire for the tactical rifle category. I wouldn't necessarily recommend hipfiring with this gun unless you're in kind of a desperate situation at point blank range. This brings us to Idle Sway, which was just recently buffed on the Swordfish, and as you can see here, it's got practically zero Idle Sway now. This brings us to recoil, and as you can see here, the Swordfish is extremely accurate. There is a small amount of recoil within each burst, but generally recoil should never really be an issue for you. Our magazine capacity is quite decent at 36 rounds with 108 total starting ammo, and with hybrid mags we can bump that up to 44 rounds in a magazine with 132 starting ammo. Our reload add time is the slowest in the tactical rifle category, and it is quite slow at 1.92 seconds, but the hybrid mag not only adds ammo, it also allows you to reload faster, and with hybrid mags we get a very respectable reload time at 1.32 seconds. This brings us to our handling and mobility stats. For our aim down sight time, it's pretty much standard for the tactical rifle category at 300 milliseconds, but we have the option to use not only quick draw 1, but also quick draw 2. With quick draw 1, we get an aim down sight time of 250 milliseconds, so it becomes right in line with the SMGs, or at least most of the SMGs in this game. And with quick draw 2, we can make that even faster, all the way down to 150 milliseconds, which is extremely fast. As for our sprint out time, this is also 300 milliseconds standard, but with Gun Co, we can cut that down to 150 milliseconds, or if you break your sprint by aiming down sight while using Gung Ho, you can eliminate that sprint out time. Our movement speed is standard for both assault rifles as well as tactical rifles at 95%, and same thing goes with our aim down sight straight speed, this is also standard at 40%. So one final thing to look at before we start getting into the best attachments as well as best class setups for the Swordfish is the Operator mod. Now the Operator mod on this gun is the Penta Burst, and what this does is it converts it from a 4 round burst to a 5 round burst, which means you can now get a 1 burst kill on somebody within 0 to 50 meters without worrying about headshots or high caliber or anything like that. With this, I did the testing and it appears to have the exact same fire rate as well as burst delay. You just have that one extra bullet within your burst. And this means our statistical minimum time to kill when using Penta Burst 
is 240 milliseconds up close if you get that one burst kill on them where all five bullets hit, which is quite a good time to kill. But beyond 50 meters, the pentaburst isn't really going to be doing too much for you because you still get a statistical minimum time to kill of 460 milliseconds. One other thing that changes with the pentaburst is our magazine capacity. That gets changed to 40 rounds with 120 in reserve. Now the pentaburst, in my opinion, is a very solid attachment for the swordfish. If you can hit all five of those shots within a burst anywhere to the body, you will end up getting a very fast kill. However, it's not going to be quite as fast as if you were just running the high caliber attachment and landing one single headshot within your burst. So let's have a look at the other attachments for the swordfish, and I'll just let you guys know which ones I prefer and I tend to lean to and why. When it comes to optics, I really like the standard optics on the swordfish. I've got no problems with those whatsoever, so generally I just stick to those and I don't run an optical attachment. As for the other attachments, my number one favorite that I will use all the time, assuming I have it unlocked at the time, is high caliber. This one is very, very important for you to get that really good time to kill potential. Aside from that though, generally I run at least one of the quick draw attachments, not always both of them. I think having both of those quick draw attachments can be a bit overkill, but also fun sometimes. Suppressor is a pretty decent choice because you already have such a great range potential with this, and therefore you can live with a little bit of a reduction to that really long range. And hybrid mags is another choice that I often like running with the swordfish. Long barrel I feel is often unnecessary because the vast majority of my gunfights will fall within 50 meters, and with FMJ, again, it's something that I don't typically use because it's mainly just used to counter those armor users, which I don't run into them too often, and usually when I do, I don't have that much of an issue dealing with them. So finally, let's get into a couple great example classes I have for you guys with the Swordfish. First up is my all-around sort of Swordfish class. This one is excellent for headshots, and you really want to be making sure that you hit at least one of the bullets in your burst to the head. So typically, I'll aim sort of upper chest or neck area. And with this, we're using Quick Draw, High Caliber, and Hybrid Mags. We've got the launcher on there just because the launcher is great in this game. You can take out UAVs, no problem, as well as enemy equipment. Stim Shot is our gear, so we can get back in the fight as fast as possible. We're using Special Issue Equipment with this. We've got Engineer, Gung Ho, as well as Dead Silence. These are kind of my top three perks at the moment. And overall, this is just a great, well-balanced Swordfish class that can be used in a wide variety of situations. Like I said, the main focus with this one, though, is make sure you hit one of those shots in the head. This brings us to the second class that I have for you guys. And with this one, we are using the Pentaburst Operator mod, which is awesome because we don't really have to worry about making sure we hit one of our bullets to the head. We just have to hit all of the bullets within a burst in order to get a great time to kill. So aside from the Operator mod, we've got Quick Draw as well as Suppressor on this one. I really find if you're at extremely long ranges, it's not super practical to be hitting every one of the five shots anyways. So therefore, I don't really mind reducing my range slightly with Suppressor. And I still find that I get very consistent one burst kills with this. Once again, we've got a launcher on this class, and this is kind of a stealth class, and you'll notice I'm not running Ghost on this. And the simple reason for that was covered in a video I did a couple days ago, talking about the Ghost perk in this game and how it's essentially useless. So I'd much rather just have a launcher on this class, that way if the enemy does call a UAV in, I can just shoot it out of the sky as fast as possible. For our gear, we've got the Comsec device, so I can get those streaks up a little bit faster. Once again, our equipment is the Special Issue Equipment. And finally, for our perks, we're just running Gung Ho as well as Dead Silence. With this class, I try to flank as much as possible, but having said that, it's still great in those face-to-face -face situations at that mid sort of range. I feel that's where this really excels, is at the somewhat close to mid ranges. Super long ranges, you can still challenge enemies if you'd like, but it doesn't necessarily excel in those situations. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for the gun guide on the Swordfish. Personally, I really like this gun. It's quite a solid burst rifle. It's very, very accurate. And if you are accurate and you're hitting headshots with high caliber or you're using the Pentaburst Operator mod, then you've got yourself a really, really good gun. Without those attachments, though, I will say the Swordfish is a little bit on the underwhelming side, so it might be a bit of a grind for you initially to unlock those attachments. But trust me, once you get those, it is absolutely worth it with the Swordfish. Of course, though, I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think of the Swordfish? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Are you kind of undecided on that? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, if you guys have missed any of the previous episode of Gun Guides, I've now covered all of the assault rifles as well as all of the tactical rifles. Of course, I will leave a link to the playlist down below. And I also wanted to point out something I'm doing that's different this year is I'm still going to be covering patch notes like I have been. I did a big video yesterday on the massive patch that we got covering all of the before and after details and all of that kind of stuff. But with the individual gun guide episodes, what I'm also doing is I'm putting a pinned comment on them anytime something changes 
I will make an update within that pin comment, and I will do this throughout the entire year. Anytime there's an update and the stats change for a gun, I will leave it in that pin comment so you can follow that a whole lot easier rather than having to go through and watch an entire playlist of patch update videos just to find out what the current stats are on a gun. So hopefully you guys appreciate that. Hopefully that helps you out in keeping up with these stats as time goes on. Uh, most of the guns that I've already covered, or many of the guns I've already covered, have had a few changes. So if you want, you can go check out those pinned comments, and that'll bring you up to speed on the gun. If you enjoy the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.